So, in the previous class, we ended with uh, with this observation that you can uh, that any linear program can be written in this sort in this form that you are minimizing a function c transpose x over constraints that look like this. So, a linear program is an optimization of a linear function over a polyhedron, but then you can write it in this form that you are minimizing a linear function c transpose x over a set of the form a x equal to b and x greater than equal to 0. This is what was called the standard form of linear of a linear program. And what is uh, uh, what are the uh, assumptions of the standard form? So, if a is a matrix that is r m cross n, then the rank of a should be m. So, a is full row rank. And moreover, we said we can assume b to be greater. And moreover, we assume that b could be greater has to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So now, what uh, I mentioned briefly at the end of the last class was that such of uh, an LP once written in a standard form, if it if it has a if it, if it is, has a non-empty feasible region, if this feasible region, let's call this, let's call this P, this polyhedron X such that A X equals B and X greater than or equal to zero. If this is not empty, right? If it is not empty, then it has at least one extreme point. And we also said showed how that extreme point is derived. It is derived by looking at uh, so, uh, certain columns of A that form a linearly independent set. Okay. So, what I will do today is just whatever I said in the previous class, I will just do it in a little bit more detail. Okay. So, now A remember is A is full row rank, which means that we can find we can find m linearly independent columns of a so we can find m linearly independent columns of a okay so now, can we find more than m linearly independent columns of A? Can A have more than m linearly independent columns? That is not possible because A the rank of A is m, right. So, you can find, but we can certainly find m linearly independent columns. Now, let us put, let us look at A like this. So, suppose A is this sort of matrix, suppose this is A1, this is A2, this is A n. Now, I can find say m linearly independent columns like this. Okay. Now, they may not be in the they may not be the first m columns or the second uh, or or they may not be contiguous one after the other, but there are some m linearly independent columns. Now, what I will do is for simplicity, I will just arrange them in this form sort of form. I will just put take all the linearly independent columns and write them first. Okay, so, I express A in this sort of form, I write A as B n, where B comprises of linearly independent so m linearly independent columns. Now, what this amounts to doing, just putting B at the beginning and all the rest at the end what it amounts to doing is simply permuting the order of my x's right the ones that have the the x's that are uh, that, that correspond to the columns 
uh, the linearly independent columns have just been written first and the rest have been written later right and that does not affect my other constraint which is just x greater than or equal to 0 okay so without without loss of generality for each each selection of linearly independent columns i can express a in this kind of form by requiring maybe if necessary permuting x okay so what i so remember i need to find uh, find if uh, uh, i need to be feasible with respect to my constraint so which means that i still need to satisfy ax equals b and x greater than equal to 0 now i have b n which is my a now let's suppose the columns that multiply the the x's that multiply b are written as x b and the the rest are written as x n so then i am looking to satisfy this equation b n x b x n equals b in addition to that i'm i need x b greater than equal to 0 and x n also greater than equal to 0 now because b has has m rows and m columns so b is square and is ha, has uh, has is is uh, is non singular because its rank is m it is non singular so what that means is i can one one way of solving solving this equation here is to do the following i just set xn equal to 0 set xn as 0 and then solve for bn sorry solve for xb in that case then what would i get xb as i get xb as capital b inverse b How do I get this? This is because this is b x b plus n x n equals small b, and I I am setting x n equal to zero. So then, in that case, I get that x b is b inverse b. So so in in summary, the point x is of the form b inverse b followed by zero. Once I have done this. Actually, it did not. You realize that it did not really matter that I put my columns of B first and the, uh, the uh, you know the columns of B first and the rest later. What matters is so long as I am keeping track of what columns form B, I can still do this, right? So, so what this means is I can I can I can create points like this. These are called basic solutions. Okay, basic solutions. basic solution is a point of the form where is obtained is a point x that solves a x equal to b such that x can be written as x b x n now when i write it like this it doesn't necessarily mean that they are in this order but they are basically there are n there are n minus m here and m here x n equals equals 0 and x b and the and the columns of b are linearly independent so to generate basic solutions all we need to do is look at some m linearly independent columns of of a corresponding to those columns you will solve for xb all the other x x a all the other uh, co uh, the coordinates of x are set as 0 okay. right put the two together that gives you what is called a basic solution now such a basic solution need not necessarily satisfy x greater than or equal to 0 so remember we had to satisfy this as well as this so 
So, a basic solution definitely satisfies the first equation here A x equals B, but it need not satisfy x greater than equal to 0. So, if if it so happens that B inverse B is greater than equal to 0, then it will satisfy A x equals uh, x greater than equal to 0. So, if B inverse B is equal greater than equal to 0, then the solution is is called a basic feasible solution then the solution is called a basic feasible solution all right now what is the uh, why is this concept so important the reason it's so, so important is because basic feasible solutions which is a way of solving these uh, linear equations and this greater than equal to inequality basic feasible solutions which are just basically an algebraic solution of this system of equations and inequalities they actually have a geometric significance okay. basic feasible solutions have this geometric significance and that is given by this theorem. is what does it talk about? It talks of the equivalence of basic feasible solutions and extreme points. Okay. So, let P be this set let P be this set x such that A x equals B x greater than equal to 0 A in is in R m cross n and full row rank and then x then x is an extreme point of p if and only if x is a basic feasible solution So, let us see how this is this is proved. So, what does this theorem say? It is saying that the there, there is a fundamental equivalence between uh, the notion of extreme uh, extreme points which is a geometric property of the feasible region of this uh, of your uh, of your linear program and this algebraic construct called a, as a basic feasible solution. Okay. So, what is the uh, what is the proof? It's, this is, uh, the proof is not that hard. So you will see that the proof actually uses the fact that A is full row rank. Okay, that is uh, that's vital in all of this. Okay. Okay. So let us see. We have to prove that X is a fee extreme point of P if and only if X is a basic feasible solution. All right. So now let's uh, uh, let us let's assume uh, let's first do this direction. Suppose we let us prove that x is a basic feasible solution and show that it must be an extreme point and then we will as then we will show the other direction which is that which is showing that if x is an x uh, uh, is an extreme point then it must be a basic feasible solution all right so so part 1 So, assume x is a BFS, okay. assume x is a basic feasible solution. What does this mean? This means there exist some x 1, x 2 dot 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 x m which are the uh, which are such that which are coordinates of x such that x can be written like this x 1, x 2 till x m and the rest of it are 0. 
So, now the x 1 till x m also could be 0 that does not mean that they are not 0, but definitely the remaining n minus m have to be 0 right, but x 1 till x m are necessarily greater than equal to 0, because this is a basic x is a basic feasible solution right. So, so let us write it like this there exists x 1 x x m greater than equal to 0 such that x can be written in this form x 1 till x m followed by a string of n minus m zeros. We assume that x is a BFS. Now, suppose x is not an extreme point. Suppose x is not an extreme point. If x is not an extreme point, then there exists this implies there exists some y and z in this set P and uh, an alpha that is strictly between 0 and 1, y and z um, there exists distinct points y and z, distinct points y and z in P and an alpha in 0 1 such that x can be written as alpha y plus 1 minus alpha z right. Uh, x can be written as alpha y. So, x is a convex combination of y and z, y and z are distinct points in P and alpha is something that is strictly between 0 and 1. Now, if, if that is the case, what can one say about uh, what can you say about the about the components of y and z if you look at x x has this sort of form it's the first first uh, x1 till xm the first m m of these are some greater some elements greater than equal to 0 but definitely the last n minus m are 0 now, the, if the last n minus m are 0, then that has to be the case also for the last n minus m components of y as well as z, right, because it is a convex combination of of these which is giving you which is giving you uh, which is giving you x, right. So, so formally see remember y is greater than equal to 0, z is also greater than equal to 0. Why is this the case? Because y and z both belong to p. In the, since they belong to P, y and z are also greater than equal to 0. They also satisfy a y equals b and a z equals b. Now, if you look at the last n minus m components, if you look at the last n minus m components in this equation, you are getting a 0 here on the left hand side. The only uh, but and that is coming from a convex combination of non negative terms of y and non negative terms from z. The only way that you can get they can add up to 0 is, is they are both themselves 0, right. So, a y uh, the, the last n minus m components of y and 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 of z have to be 0, right. So, what that means is y is of the form y 1 till y m followed by 0, 0. 0, z is of the form z 1 till z m followed by 0 0 ok. All right. Now, now therefore, now, now go back to this equation which is which is that a y equals b, we have already that a y equals b and a z equals b right. If a y is equals b and a z is equal to b, now suppose, suppose I had partitioned a as b n, where these, these are my, these are all linearly independent, then, then a y equals b is simply, is simply saying is equivalent to saying b into y 1 till y m equals small b and similarly a z equals b is saying b into z 1 till z m 
equals small b right but now then but then what do you find well b is b has linearly independent columns m uh, b is sing, is non singular b is invertible so which means i should be able, i can just take b on the other, other i can invert and take b on the other side and that will give me that y1 till ym this is equal to z1 till zm and they are both equal to b inverse b but then what was b inverse b it was actually x1 till xm so what we conclude from here is that you must have y equal to z equal to x so so it so this this from this we get that basically that if 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 x is a, a basic feasible solution it must be an extreme point so y equals uh, z equals x this is a contradiction why is this a contradiction this is a contradiction because we had assumed that because we had assumed that y and z are distinct points in p so for x to not be an extreme point it, this is how it should be y and z must be distinct point right so x is uh, so x is if x is a basic feasible solution it must be an extreme point all right